Hi Wales, I hope you've had an awesome weekend. Our chapter today from Matilda is called Miss Honey's Story. We mustn't hurry this, Miss Honey said. So let's have another cup of tea and do eat that other slice of bread. You must be hungry. Matilda took the second slice and started eating it slowly. The margarine wasn't that wasn't at all bad. She doubted whether she could have told the difference if she hadn't known. Miss Honey, she said suddenly, do they pay you very badly at our school? Miss Honey looked up sharply. Not too badly, she said. I do get about the same as the others. But it must still be very little if you are so dreadfully poor, Matilda said. Do all the teachers live like this with no furniture and no kitchen stove and no bathroom no they don't she said rather stiffly i just happen to be the exception i expect you just happen to like living in a very simple way matilda said probing a little further it must make house cleaning an awful lot easier and you don't have furniture to polish or polish or any of those silly little ornaments lying around that having that have to be dusted every day and i suppose if you don't have a fridge you don't have to go out and buy all sorts of junky things like eggs and mayonnaise and ice cream to fill it up with it must save a terrific lot of shopping at this point, Matilda noticed that Miss Honey's face had gone all tight and peculiar looking. Her whole body had become rigid. Her shoulders were hunched up high and her lips were pressed together tight. And she sat there gripping her mug in both hands and staring down into it as though searching for a way to answer these not quite so innocent questions. There followed a rather long and embarrassing silence. In the space of 30 seconds, the atmosphere in this tiny room had changed completely and now it was vibrating with awkwardness and secrets. Matilda said, I'm very sorry I asked you those questions, Miss Honey. It is not any of my business. There we are, sat together. Sorry, squeaky chair. At this, Miss Honey seemed to rouse herself. She gave a shake of her shoulders and then very carefully she placed her mug on the tray. Why shouldn't you ask? She said. You were bound to ask in the end. You are much too bright to have wondered. Perhaps I wanted you to ask. Maybe that is why I invited you here after all. As a matter of fact, you are the first visitor to come to the cottage since I moved in two years ago. Matilda said nothing. She could feel the tension growing and growing in the room. You are so much wiser than your years, my dear, Miss Honey went on, that it quite staggers me. Although you look like a child, you are not really a child at all, because your mind and your powers of reasoning seem to be so fully grown up. So I suppose we might call you a grown-up child, if you see what I mean. Matilda, still not saying anything, she was waiting for what was coming next. Up to now, Miss Honey went on, I found it impossible to talk to anyone about my problems. I couldn't face the embarrassment. And anyway, I lack the courage. Any courage I had was knocked out of me when I was young. But now, all of a sudden, I have a sort of desperate wish to tell everything to somebody. I know you are only a tiny little girl, but there is some kind of magic in you somewhere. I've seen it with my own eyes. Matilda became very alert. The voice she was hearing was surely crying out for help. It must be. It had to be. Then the voice spoke again. Have some more tea, it said. I think there's a drop, still a drop left. Matilda nodded. Miss Honey poured tea into both mugs and, handed, and added milk. Again, she cupped her own mug in both hands and sat there sipping. There was quite a long silence before she said, 
may I tell you a story? Of course, Matilda said. I am 23 years old, Miss Honey said. And when I was born, my father was a doctor in this village. We had a nice house, quite large, red brick. It's tucked away in the woods, behind the hills. I don't think you'd know it. Matilda kept silent. I was born there, Miss Honey said. And then came the first tragedy. Tragedy. Sorry, I struggled to say it. My mother died when I was two. My father, a busy doctor, had to have someone to run the house and look and to look after me. So he invited my mother's unmarried sister, my aunt, to come and live with us. She agreed and she came. Matilda was listening intently. How old was your aunt when she moved in? She asked. Not very old, Miss Honey said. I should say about 30. But I hated her from the start. I missed my mother terribly and the aunt was not a kind person. My father didn't know that because he was hardly ever around but when he did put in an appearance my aunt behaved differently. Miss Honey paused and sipped her tea. I can't think why I'm telling you all of this, she said, embarrassed. Go on, Matilda said, please. Well, Miss Honey said. Then came the second tragedy. When I was five, my father died very suddenly. One day he was there and the next he was gone. And so I was left to live alone with my aunt. She became my legal guardian. She had all the powers of a parent over me. And in some way or another, she became the actual owner of the house. How did your father die? Matilda asked. It is, an, it is interesting you should ask that, Miss Honey said. I myself was much too young to question it at the time, but I found out later that there was a good deal of mystery surrounding his death. Didn't they know how he died? Matilda asked. Well, not exactly, Miss Honey said, hesitating. You see, no one could believe that he would ever have done it. He was such a very sane and sensible man. Done what? asked Matilda. Killed himself. Matilda was stunned. Did he? she gasped. That's what it looked like, Miss Honey said. But who knows? she shrugged and turned away and stared out of the tiny window. I know what you're thinking, Matilda said. You're thinking that the aunt killed him and made it look as though he'd done it himself. I am not thinking anything, Miss Honey said. One must never think things like that without proof. The little room became quiet. Matilda noticed that the hands clasping the mug were trembling slightly. What happened after that? she asked. What happened when you were left all alone with the aunt? Wasn't she nice to you? Nice, Miss Honey said. She was a demon. As soon as my father was out of the way, she became a holy terror. My life was a nightmare. What did she do to you? Matilda asked. I don't want to talk about it, Miss Honey said. It's too horrible. But in the end, I became so frightened of her that I used to start shaking when she came into the room. You must understand that I was never a strong character like you. I was always shy and retiring. Didn't you have any other relations? Matilda asked. And any uncles or aunts or grannies who would come and see you? None that I knew about, Miss Honey said. They were all either dead or gone to Australia. And that's the way it is now, I'm afraid. So you grew up in that house alone with your aunt, Matilda said. But you must have gone to school. Of course, Miss Honey said. I went to the same school you're at now, but I lived at home. Miss Honey paused and stared into the, her empty mug. I think what I am trying to explain to you, she said, 
is that over the years I became comp so completely cowed and dominated by this monster of an aunt that when she gave me an order, no matter what it was, I obeyed it instantly. That can happen, you know. And by the time I was ten, I had become her slave. I did all the housework, I made her bed, I washed and ironed for her, for her. I did all the cooking, I learned how to do everything. But surely you must have complained to somebody, Matilda said. To whom? Miss Honey said. And anyway, I was far too terrified to complain. I told you, I was her slave. Did she beat you? Let's not get into details, Miss Honey said. How simply awful, Matilda said. Did you cry nearly all the time? Only when I was alone, Miss Honey said. I wasn't allowed to cry in front of her, but I lived in fear. What happened when you left school? Matilda asked. I was a bright pupil, Miss Honey said. I could easily have got into university, but there was no question of that. Why not, Miss Honey? Because I, need, because I was needed at home to do the work. Then how did you become a teacher? Matilda asked. There is a teacher training, teacher's training college in Reading, Miss Honey said. That's only 40 minutes bus ride away from here. I was allowed to go there on condition I came straight home every afternoon to do the washing and ironing and to clean the house and cook the supper. How old were you then? Matilda asked. When I went into teacher's training, I was 18, Miss Honey said. You could have just packed up and walked away, Matilda said. Not until I got a job, Miss Honey said. And don't forget, I was by then dominated by my aunt to such an extent that I wouldn't have dared. You can't imagine what it was like to be so to be completely controlled by, like that by a very strong personality. It turns you to jelly. So that's it. That's the sad story of my life. And now I've talked enough. Please don't stop, Matilda said. You haven't finished yet. How did you manage to get away from her in the end and come and live in this funny little house? Ah, that was something, Miss Honey said. I was very proud of that. Tell me, Matilda said. Well, Miss Honey said, when I got my teacher's job, the aunt told me I owed her a lot of money. I asked her why. She said, because I've been feeding you all of these years and buying your shoes and clothes. She told me it added up to thousands and I had to pay her back by giving her my salary for the next 10 years. I'll give you one pound every week pocket money, she said, but that's all you're going to get. She even arranged with the school authorities to have my salary paid directly into her own bank. She made me sign the paper. You shouldn't have done that, Matilda said. Your salary was your chance of freedom. I know, I know, Miss Honey said, but by then I had been her slave nearly all of my life and I hadn't the courage or the guts to say no. I was still petrified of her. She could still hurt me badly. So how come, so how, so blah, 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 sorry. So how did you manage to escape? Matilda asked. Ah, Miss Honey said, smiling for the first time. That was two years ago. It was my greatest triumph. Please tell me. Here we are. I used to get up very early and go for walks while my aunt was still asleep, Miss Honey said. And one day I came across this tiny cottage. It was empty. I found out who owned it. It was a farmer. I went to see him. Farmers also get up very early. He was milking his cows. I asked him if I could rent his cottage. You can't live there, he cried. It's got no conveniences, no running water, no nothing. I want to live there, I said. I'm a romantic. I've fallen in love with it. Please rent it to me. 
You're mad, he said, but if you insist, you're welcome to it. The rent will be ten pence a week. Here's one month's rent in advance, I said, giving him 40p, and thank you so much. How super, Matilda cried. So suddenly you had a house all of your own. But how did you pluck up the courage to tell your aunt? That was tough, Miss Honey said. But I steeled myself to do it. One night, after I had cooked her supper, I went upstairs and packed the few things I possessed in a cardboard box and came downstairs and announced I was leaving. I've rented a house, I said. My aunt exploded. Rented a house, she shouted. How can you have rented a house when you have only one pound a week in the world? I've done it, I said. And how are you going to buy food for yourself? I'll manage, I mumbled. And I rushed out of the door. Yes, she is telling the story. Oh, well done you, Matilda cried. So you were free at last. I was free at last, Miss Honey said. And I can't tell you how wonderful it was. But have you really managed to live here on one pound a week for two years? Matilda asked. I most certainly have, Miss Honey said. I pay ten pence rent and the rest just about buys me paraffin for the stove and for my lamp and a little milk and tea and bread and marg margarine. That's all I need, really. As I told you, I have a jolly good tuck in at the school lunch. Matilda stared at her. What a marvellously brave thing Miss Honey had done. Suddenly she was a heroine in Matilda's eyes. Isn't it awfully cold in the winter? she asked. I've got my little paraffin stove, Miss Honey said. You'd be surprised how snug I can make it in here. Do you have a bed, Miss Honey? Well, not exactly, Miss Honey replied, smiling again. But they say it's very healthy to sleep on a hard surface. All at once, Matilda was able to see the whole situation with absolute clarity. Miss Honey needed help. There was no way she could go on existing like this indefinitely. You would, do, you would be a lot better off, Miss Honey she said, if you gave up your job and drew unemployment money. I would never do that, Miss Honey said. I love teaching. This awful aunt, Matilda said, I suppose she is still living in your lovely old house. Very much so, Miss Honey said. She's still only about 50. She'll be around for a long time yet. And do you think your father really meant her to own you, the house forever? I'm quite sure he didn't, Miss Honey said. Parents will often give a guardian the right to occupy the house for a certain length of time, but it is nearly always left in trust for the child. It then becomes the child's property when he or she grows up. And surely it is your house, Matilda said. My father's will was never found, Miss Honey said. It looks as though somebody destroyed it. No prizes for guessing who, Matilda said. No prizes, Miss Honey said. But if there is no will, Miss Honey, then surely the house goes automatically to you. You are the next of kin. I know I am, Miss Honey said. But my aunt produced a piece of paper, supposedly written by my father, saying that he leaves the house to his sister-in-law in return for her kindness looking after me. I am certain it's a forgery, but no one can prove it. Couldn't you try? Matilda asked. Couldn't you hire a good lawyer and make a fight of it? I don't have the money to do that, Miss Honey said, and you must remember that this aunt of mine is a much respected figure in the community. She has a lot of influence. Who is she? Matilda asked. Miss Honey hesitated a moment. Then she said softly, Miss Trunchbull. Right, I hope you enjoyed that chapter. Uh, tomorrow's chapter is called The Names and we will have that tomorrow. Have a lovely rest of your evening and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!